Well, you may notice that I did move my bench out, workbench out into the hangar from the shop area. It's cooler weather now, so not a big deal to be out here in the hangar. And I just have more room to work around for the wings. So I have got, this is the left wing layout. I've got the front spar, aft spar set up there. Uh, all of the ribs, except for the root rib. Next, what I'm doing is deciphering where the bushings go for the uh, aileron and flap hinges, or the hinge arms, I should say. And I had to pull up the manual on, a, on my iPad so I could zoom in to this diagram and figure out what's going on. I guess I didn't really need to zoom in, but it, it really helped. Um, so I think I've got it figured out. Got these two here, and then I'll just do a mirror of these for the right wing. Uh, but I just made a little silver Sharpie mark on the side that the flange is gonna go. Uh, I reamed these out to 5 16 and now I'm gonna go ahead and use my Arbor Press and get these pressed in. my hinge arms laid out as well as these pieces here uh, this one as well this is the Teflex mount um, flap hinge arms so I've, I've got them laid out where they're gonna go this is definitely something you really want to double check triple check when you're laying this out because it can get confusing when this I'm doing the left wing right now because that's what's diagrammed figured I'd start with that but when I do the right one, I'll just need to make sure that I mirror what I'm doing here. And you just really got to follow the directions here in terms of the orientation. It's pretty obvious, um, really, because it has to go on the flat side of the rib. So, like, I couldn't mount it here. It's going to have to go, you know, on that side of the rib. Um, so it is pretty intuitive, I guess. But uh, making sure that you have the right, the bushings on the right side is critical, I guess. So uh, that's something to keep track of. And I, I think I have them right. <laughs> uh, I'll check the diagram again. If they're not, I'll change that. But best I could tell, I have these correct. On the flaps, the flap uh, hinge arms, or the flap hinges are on the outboard side of the hinge arms. So I've got all of my flanges when that, when that gets vertical that'll go to the outside 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 and as well with this one outside and then the um the ailerons the hinge arms are these here they go on the inside of the hinges so um that'll go there the flap hinge will go on this side and then when this goes up vertical the flap hinge will go on that side so like I said, I think I've got these all right. <laughs> um, I think next step is to start attaching these components to the ribs. I've got the aileron hinge arm clecoed up. Um, they give you a few holes to, to cleco to, and then you're going to match drill uh, through the hinge arm into the rib. Of course, take it apart, deburr, and then it can be put back on. So I'm going to go through, cleco all of these onto their respective ribs. Got them all clecoed up there, ready for match drilling. Uh, you may have noticed these are all black. These are anodized. Uh, if you go way back to early in the series, um, I talked about how I selected parts for anodizing and all of my flap and aileron hinge arms. Um, these pieces here and here, um, those are all uh, black anodized. I explain my thoughts for the anodizing in that video. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get going on uh, match drilling now. One thing I'm doing is 
I'm marking the uh, hinge arms. So this says number 10, that's because it's going to rib number 10. I have to separate these for deburring and I wanna make sure I put them back in the same spot. Uh, my numbering system, I just started at the wing tip um, and went 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, and so on, all the way down to one at the end. Uh, if you're a computer science guy, you'd probably be wondering why I didn't start at zero and end at 10. <laughs> Whatever, it works. Um, so I'll go ahead now and get that finished, but I just wanted to kind of point out that I did do that numbering on all of these, just to make sure somewhere along the way I don't get something in the wrong place. These pieces here, they only give you these three holes right here. And you can see there's quite a bit of wiggle room that can happen. Um, so I'm just running this parallel visually. I'm not getting uh, so accurate as to, you know, get my calipers out, but whatever just kind of looks about parallel there, I'm gonna set that, drill that one, Clico that, and then drill the rest. So I found uh, an issue here, looking for the attach angles. And I look at, so it says number eight. When I come over to number eight and read off the part number, come across, it's uh, KPWI 0669. But here's what's interesting, quantity, zero. Same thing with the forward attach angles is a 0670, quantity zero. So I thought, well, maybe a misprint here. I'll just look for the parts. I have no parts in my kit labeled with those part numbers, but I do have this KAWI0037. And it looks to have those nested on. Here are some larger attach angles, but then all of these smaller ones are here. So I'm gonna make the assumption that these are the attach angles that I need. And uh, they, for whatever reason, they just don't call it that part number. Possibly because they nest it all into one piece, might be my guess, but something to watch for. So these will have to get trimmed out from this nested assembly here. Uh, for that, I'm just gonna use my shears to rough cut and then I'll uh, file them smooth. Well, I'm at the point now where I'm gonna rotate the front spar up and Clico the ribs to the front spar. I wanted to pick the wing up off the table. Probably should have done that before I clicked the ribs on. It might've been a little easier. And what I decided to use was some of this I-beam that I forgot I had extra lengths of this uh, sitting in my side yard. These are cutoffs from a, uh, a big ass uh, industrial uh, robotics machine that I worked on a couple years ago. And they are, four inches by, I think it's like three. Yeah, four by three. And I just happened to look at the length. They, they're perfect. They sit right underneath the front spar 
and they come just past the back uh, aft spar there. Perfect. So, nice. Uh, I'll go ahead and stick this one on the other end there. I've got a match drill through these holes here, quarter inch here for the aileron and the flap bell cranks where they mount up. I'm gonna get the truss bolted in here and uh, got my bore scope out and I'm looking in there and I think this is gonna do it. This is the wrench I'm using. It's a long half inch combo, 9 16 uh, open end wrench and it's straight. I wish it wasn't the thin, this is a thin style. I wish I had a little more thickness to it, but because it's straight and you know flat, I'm actually able to stick it in there flat up against the spar, you get, you get the idea. I'm not able to do this with holding the phone and doing this at the same time, but once I get it, ooh, can I? If I come back, no, you get the idea. <laughs> once I get it, it lays flat up against the spar, and then all I have to do is just kind of pinch it up against the spar right there, and then I'm able to come up here and tighten this down. I did have to add a shim, an extra little piece of Lexan shim on this bolt here because as I started to tighten this up and I checked for square of the wing, of the ribs and everything, it kind of wanted to uh, pull this, I think it was wanting to pull that out a little bit. So I just took, what I did is I just took my uh, combination square down to here. I put a mark where this surface is on the table Measured that over, it was 19 and 7 eighths or whatever here. Went over there, marked 19 and 7 eighths, brought my combo square over and slid the rib to it. Because this is this table is cut very square, so I was able to use that as a reference. And uh, once I got it square, I came back over here and I noticed there was a slight gap right here. So one thickness, the thickness of one shim seems to have done that. And that's uh, holding it square. Um, I did have to leave these ribs back here uncleecoed so that I could get the clearance I need to drop this truss in place. And for right now, I just kind of put a couple quarter inch bolts, uh, AN fours in there just to hold that up while I was working up here. So now that I got these two, and these I think are, I was gonna say these are probably the hardest ones, but maybe not because the other ones go in this way. And now I'm dealing with a nut in there and it's not gonna be so easy with just a wrench. So I did get these by myself. I may have to get help for the outer two. So two of those are done, and I'll try to fuss with the other two now. Okay, well, that was a pain in the ass, but let's see here. There they are, two and two. Got them. I did have to get some smaller hands in here to help me uh, on these outside ones, but those are in, those are torqued. Ah, you know what? Out of this entire build so far of all of this that I've done, right? That was the most difficult, not difficult, the most uh, inaccessible, tedious, hardest thing to get done. That took almost an hour to get those four bolts. Everything done, tightened up. <laughs> there must be a better way. <laughs> Uh, it's not a big deal if you got small hands, I guess, but I was trying to fight it for the first two. Uh, okay, well, I guess I can do the proper hardware back here now. Coming back here and uh, noticing I've got, that's probably a, I don't know, maybe 150 thousandths gap in between eighth and three sixteenths. Now the manual does call for some washer stack ups in there couple thicks and a thin, which does seem to, I guess, come to about that dimension. Um, but I did just post a question up on the Facebook group, uh, S21 Builders group, just to verify anybody that's been at the stage, if they also had a similar sized gap. Uh, also, I, I should mention that, yes, um, this is straight. You know, I, this isn't like pulled out or anything. When I sight down, it may not show very well on the camera here, but I do have a, um, that's a straight line all the way down. So it's not like, you know, it's not like I just pulled this in. Plus if I did pull it in, oops, 
buckles the ribs. So um, this is appropriate size, but again, I just put a question up on the form, wanted to make sure that that is um, in fact true. Okay, here's what I found out. Two thick washers and a thin gets me pretty much the thickness I need. But what I decided to do is use a larger, all right, here's what I settled on. Um, two thick washers and a thin is about the right thickness, but I decided to go with a large uh, 970 washer here. Um, glue, and I just glued these together just so that they could all be kind of in a stack up. And then with being a larger washer, I could actually use my fingers and maneuver it in there. So I'll have a, a big 970 instead of, you know, a stack up of 960s and then the thin. So I guess I added about six grams, <laughs> but that'll let me more easily maneuver this in here. Shit, I'm even be able to do this with one hand while I'm recording. Not quite, almost, but that's what I'm gonna do. Got it, easy. That was a piece of cake. By having uh, the larger washer, I was able to maneuver it. So, hey, and if nothing else, I'm just kinda spreading the load over a little bit more surface area there, right? So the truss is in the left wing. Um, that is complete. Of course, I got my plates there mounted, and there we go. I fit the aileron bell crank assembly in place, put the drilled head uh, AN4s on the ends. Still need to uh, drill a little hole here in the rib, I guess, and safety wire these. Um, they are Loctited, but as an additional bit of security, uh, looks like they want you to do a safety wire there. So. I'll do that. I still got to put an AN3 in here. Uh, it's kind of the you know, anti-torque part of the structure there. And then I need to, I haven't even put the aileron, I'm sorry, the flap bell crank, that hasn't even been put in place yet. So I'll get that in here. Same thing, AN4s on the ends, AN3 here. Then I'll proceed with riveting the uh, ribs along the um, aft spar and I'll need to check the manual but I believe it said not to rivet the uh, what was it the upper hole uh, because that's where the, the gap seal um, piece gets riveted to I'll check the manual but there is a there are some holes that don't get riveted don't exactly know that at the moment uh, but there's enough work here uh, to get me going for a little bit so I will finish this guy off Get the flat bell crank in. Oh, and then also at that point, I can string the aileron cable sitting right there. I can put that around the pulley. That gets safety wired there. I'll show that when I get to that point. So got a few things I can do yet here. I noticed as I was riveting the uh, wing ribs to the aft spar that the top, uh, the top rivet is because of the extrusion is angled here. I couldn't fit my rivet gun in there. So I've got my wedge tool if you don't have your wedge tool, this is what it looks like. It's a little handle with a uh, kind of a wedge shape there. And what it allows you to do is put the rivet up in there and it's got a nice hard stop that's parallel to the work surface, but your rivet tool can be angled. I don't know if you can make that out, but it does give you the clearance and you can actually angle it quite a bit. I don't need to go much. So I am gonna use the wedge tool across the tops of those. And it is the, the middles that don't get riveted all the way down for the gap seals. Well, I've got the left wing here pretty much ready for skinning. I've gone through the manual. I did the pre-skin checklist in there. Everything is done with the exception of wiring down the wing for uh, strobe light, uh, nav light, landing lights. I've got to run that wiring yet. And then also I have to run the uh, tubing for the pedo tube and the uh, AOA. I'm gonna hold off on that because I'm gonna be using the Dynon uh, pedo tube and I've got this you know, generic mount. I think I got this at Aircraft Spruce. Or maybe it's the Dynon mount. I don't know. In any case, I have to find a way to mount this. 
I'm going to hop away from that clip for just a moment. I'm in editing now, and uh, that clip continued on to explain what I was going to do at the time with the pedo mount or the pedo tube mount. And uh, I've since come up with a different plan. I'm not going to get into that just yet, but it's going to be a lot easier than what I was going to do. So there's no sense in me even talking about that. So cutting away, stay tuned for a future episode on what I'm going to do there. Uh, I think if you're building an S21 and you've got this style of pedo tube, uh, be it the Garmin or the Dynon, you might want to see what I'm working on. Uh, it's really easy. So, But it basically, it's all done. This was really easy to put together. There's just not a whole lot going on in here. Um, I didn't, there was no, uh, no gotchas anywhere. Everything pretty much just kind of went together. Um, show a little detail work here. Uh, here's our flat bell crank, Teflex mounts right in there, just a little safety wire. On the safety wire, I kind of looped it through down and I did like a double spiral wrap like you might do on a turnbuckle. So I came, wrapped it around once this way, this one came in, wrapped around it the other way and then twisted it at the top. I just felt that was a little more secure that way. And I did something similar here. Um, I actually kind of went around uh, this uh, crimped on fitting here on the uh, control cable, ferrule I guess it is. I went around it on one way, around it the other, and then twisted it. Just kind of felt like that was going to be a little better than just coming over and twisting it, which I'm sure would work just fine. So I got those done. Uh, all the safety wire for all of the um, uh, bolts that hold in the flat bell crank and aileron pulley mounts. Those all turned out pretty nicely. I just drilled holes, two millimeter holes, right in the uh, end of the rib there and uh, was able to safety wire that pretty nicely. Um, control cables for the aileron running through the block here. Um, yeah, I mean, it all just kind of went together. For now, I just kind of coiled up my Teflex cable and my aileron control cables, just out of the way out there. And what I am gonna do, just to satisfy any curiosity I have that I did these correctly, the flap and aileron, uh, hinge arms. I'm going to pull down my flaps and ailerons and I just kind of want to hold them up to this and make sure that I do have the bushings oriented in the right way. Um, in case I have to do any, I don't know, any fixes or changes or whatever. I'd rather do that when I've got access to things open, but I actually think everything is, um, is fine. So, oh, one change I deviated from the plans. They give you, uh, this like serrated plastic, um, edge edging material to protect the wiring. I couldn't get it to stay on there. I could have probably glued it, super glued, but then I was afraid it was gonna come loose. So I just went ahead and used my neoprene uh, foam tape and just wrapped around on these, on the, the two inboard ribs, this one, and then this one here, uh, just so the edge of the uh, rib won't stand any chance at cutting into the cable. So I changed that. Um, everything else is to the book. So uh, those, the rivets that hold the tie down ring to the front spar uh, through this rib here. A little tricky to get in there. I couldn't use my gun, uh, my electric or my pneumatic. I had to use the manual puller because it's just kind of tight getting in there. With the manual puller, no problem. Got it in just fine. Anything else? I don't think so. I think that pretty much covers it. So next step, I got to get this off the table. I'll bring the skin up here and I will form the leading edge of the skin. So I guess it is the top skin that goes on first. Um, so I'll get all that going and start skinning. Um, really, now that I've done this wing, the next wing, the right wing is gonna take about half as much time. I really think, honestly, I could build a wing in a weekend. Like there's just not a whole lot going on here. Got the aileron and flat mounted up. Again, just kind of as a sanity check to make sure that I had everything, hinge arms placed in the right locations bushings pressed in the right orientation and everything just fit right up. Uh, everything is perfect. I can't go any further than this because aileron is hitting this extrusion here. Actually, I suppose I could do that now. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Everything clears. There's nothing rubbing. That's all good there. And the flap. It's all good, everything lined right up. So and this is, it's close, 
but nothing rubs. It's probably three thirty seconds of an inch there. Well, an eighth maybe. But uh, everything lines up nicely. Look at that. Sweet. All right. Well, I think it's officially ready to uh, get some skinning in after I run my wiring down for the landing lights and all the other lights down there.